we're going to cover the SLAs for the labor content. Um, we're going to start with the SLA 1, and we're going to talk about the differences in perfusion for the pregnant patient versus adults. So what is different for our pregnant people? So first of all, um, the heart enlarges, it accommodates, um, because the body needs to increase the um, blood volume to help mom and to help baby. And so the way it does that um, is it increases blood volume progressively over um, a period of time from starting at six weeks to 32 weeks of pregnancy. By 32 weeks of pregnancy, the volume has increased by about 45%. This is needed because we need to transport um, nutrients and oxygen to our baby. And then it's also needed for mom because we want to support her growing tissues, which are the uterus and the breast tissue. The body, because it increases the blood volume, causes a pseudoanemia. And so normal blood, blood hemoglobin is somewhere between 12 and 15 grams per deciliter for an adult woman. For our pregnant patients, as long as they remain above 11% um, or 11 grams per deciliter, then we feel like the patient's gonna be okay. They have enough reserve um, to keep them from having problems if they lose blood at delivery. Um, if it drops below 11%, we would want our patients to take iron to help build their hemoglobin which then gives more oxygen carrying capacity to the blood, getting it to baby better. The cardiac output increases by week eight. So as that blood volume increases, our heart has to accommodate for that and it does it by increasing the volume. It's pumping out with each stroke, so stroke volume, and it also increases the heart rate. So it increases it by about 15 to 20 beats per minute to help push out more blood volume because it's increasing. The body also, um, some of the hormones in the body will decrease systemic vascular resistance. And so in doing that, it um, allows the body to uh, vasodilate a little bit easier, decreasing that resistance. And what we see in our pregnant patients a lot of times is not a very high blood pressure. So we have low blood pressures, particularly in the first and second trimesters of pregnancy. The final thing that we see is called supine hypotension. So when the patient is laying flat on their back, the weight of the baby inside of that uterus lays on top of the aorta and the vena cava. So this causes a decrease in perfusion to mom back to her heart, and it also decreases perfusion to the placenta. When it does that, it makes mom feel very lightheaded. It makes her feel nauseous. Sometimes they vomit. Um, and it also decreases her blood pressure. Um, and so because of that, they can feel like they're gonna pass out. So we wanna make sure during pregnancy, we keep our patients on their side, particularly once they hit the second and third trimesters because that will alleviate that problem. I'm gonna flip the board and we're gonna talk about the respiratory changes that will affect perfusion and gas exchange. So for the pregnant patient, during pregnancy, her oxygen consumption increases by about 20%. So mom needs to take in uh, more air to accommodate for this. And so she takes in more volume when she breathes, but she doesn't increase her rate. Progesterone and um, prostaglandin affect the mom's body by decreasing airway resistance. It makes it easier for them to breathe, and that is done by relaxing the muscles in the respiratory tract. Progesterone also um, increases the sensitivity to carbon dioxide. This makes mom more aware of the need to breathe. Estrogen increases vascularity in the uh, mucous membrane. And so a lot of times what we see for our patients is an increase in nasal congestion, an increase in edema, in the larynx and the pharynx, um, it can increase edema in the vocal cords, um, so it can deepen their voice a little bit, but it can also be a problem if the patient has to have a C-section with intubation because of the edema. It makes it harder to uh, ventilate those patients to get an ET tube in 
um, if we need to put them to sleep. Um, it also causes the patient to have an increased um, chance of having nosebleeds too because it's more vascular. The diaphragm in the later part of pregnancy will push up on the lungs or at least the space where the lungs are. Um, this causes it to be a little bit more difficult for our patients to breathe. They feel a little bit dyspneic. Um, and what happens is the chest will accommodate that by expanding um, in its uh, circumference by about five to seven centimeters. So instead of the lungs capacity being able to pull down and expand by lengthening, it has to do it by widening. So the patient can take in enough air to get oxygen for her baby and for her 